Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics, a podcast dedicated to exploring how things get places and the people who get them there. We'll talk with logistics and supply chain leaders about innovation, industry trends, and the future of the logistics business. Now, here's your host, Joe Lynch. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics podcast. My name is Joe Lynch. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's topic is the looming supply chain threat with my friend, Felix Asari. How's it going, Felix? Oh, it is amazing right now. I'm enjoying it. Uh, Felix, please introduce yourself and your company. Yeah, so I am Felix Asari, uh, one of the founders of Premier Choice Consultant. What we do is help companies basically understand where they are at in their cybersecurity journey. If they have nothing, all the way to getting them to be strong in their cybersecurity journey. Because, I mean, Joe, as you can tell, we are in a world today that is super duper crazy. And just with one click of a button, your company can go down. And when I say down, it might not just go down in flames, but it can go down with losing a ton of money. And on top of losing a ton of money, have the government come back and follow you with a lot of fines. That's what we try to, and that's what we aim to uh, help companies avoid. So we today's topic, again, looming supply chain threat. I think, Felix, you just kind of hinted at to what is the looming supply chain threat. It is the cybersecurity or the cyber terrorism. And before we hit record, we are talking about we're right in the midst of the Ukraine uh, invasion. And there's been a lot of talk from the White House and from lots of people in the supply chain saying, we are at a critical point here and you really need, and by the way, I, I saw Pete Mento, who's head of procurement over at Wayfair, and he has a ton of ba- background in world trade and procurement. And, and he posted something on LinkedIn the other day saying, yeah. he's, his voice is hoarse from saying the supply chains business, we are at risk and we're not ready. And that's right. Felix, we were introduced a long time ago, six months ago, I think, and uh, by Ann Holm. Our, well, she's she's your executive coach. She's my executive coach. Yes. And she kept saying, you need to go, you need to have Felix on your podcast. I was like, oh, we're trying, we're trying. And then when I saw that message the other day, I was like, oh, God, I got to call Felix. I got to call Felix. So thank you for coming on my podcast finally. Of course, it's a pleasure. Talk about this big threat that's out there. And again, the number one threat is cyber terrorism, cybersecurity. But what you said to me earlier was when it comes to supply chains, you're always looking for the weak link. And it's not usually the big company. It's not Kraft Heinz. It's not Budweiser. It's all the people who serve them, which, by the way, is a lot of people who listen to my podcast. We're warehousing and transportation and technology companies and logistics companies, special services that all support supply chains. So talk a little bit about this. What What is this giant threat that we're hearing about? So this is this is one thing I say when it, whenever I go speak anywhere. Think about it this way. Cybersecurity is everyone's problem. It's everyone's problem. It's not just, you know, on the company level. Yes, we are here to talk about what it means for companies, but look at it as everyone's problem. Number one, if the largest supplier of meat is not able to deliver the meat to the various stores because they were hacked, what happens to our meat prices? It goes up. It becomes our problem. If the largest supplier of oil and gas is not able to get oils to the oil refineries, where this is where supply chain comes in, then our gas prices go up. If the largest supplier of, um, you know, largest shipper in the world, Maersk, gets hacked and they are not able to ship all of our goods and stuff all over the world, we are in trouble. Yep. So you you always have to look at it like that. And then let, let's bring it down to, you know, our daily lives. Today, if you got a call from, let's just say, I mean, I, I have two kids. If I got a call from my kid's school and then they were like, oh my gosh, there's something going on over there and I have to rush over there or I get a text, I'm pretty sure in this meeting right now, I will drop everything and then leave. But what if it's not really coming from them? What if it's coming from an attacker who got to know that my kids actually go to school here and then they use that to get to me? Or what they said was click on a link. And that's the part that you were referring to earlier, that humans are the weakest link in every one of this. 
because we are the parts that think logic and think with our heart and think with our minds. And we're like, oh, you know what? That that really sounds good. I, I have a story. So we were helping this. Well, before you get into that story, I want to. I noticed you got that slight accent. I noticed when I was talking to you, and um, people are probably going, "Where is that guy from?" So, so tell me a little bit about your background before before you became a, a cybersecurity expert. Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? Give us some of those career highlights before you uh, started Premier Choice Consulting. Sure. So, I grew up in Ghana, West Africa. Spent a lot of my time in Ghana. Went to the high school. I mean, everything up until high school in Ghana. And then right after high school, I was super duper interested in technology and IT and try to understand what everything was about. I watched a show, I think it was an FBI forensic file, something. And they they could sit behind a computer and find everybody. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. And that's where I want to be. So uh, I ended up getting a scholarship, came to school out in North Dakota. And check this out, Joe. A guy from Ghana, West Africa, going to Valley City, North Dakota for college. Can you imagine? And now, Ghana, is, the weather's not cold there, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have to get that right. In their terms, it is very cold. 80 degrees is very cold for them. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so so what, was it, what was it like when you moved to go? So where's, what's, what's the name of the school? So Valley City State University, it's in Valley City, North Dakota. So it's about 60 miles from Fargo. Very nice. So here I am, Ghana, uh, guy coming from Ghana, did not have any winter jackets, have no idea what even cold feels like, and I end up in North Dakota. And my roommate at the time, he was just like, hey, my man, so do you have a winter jacket? And I said, oh, no, don't worry. My dad says I have suits. I'll be fine. I had like five different suits. I'm like, I'll be fine. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, yeah, that that was an interesting experience. So what was some of your first impressions of the United States when you moved here? Whew. Well, first things first, I did not realize I was black. I'll tell you that much. I, I had no idea. Oh, I didn't notice either. So, yeah. So, so I don't see color like that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, cause you know, so I came in the summer, got from Minneapolis to Fargo, and then at the airport, and I'm I'm, I'm wearing my three piece suit. I mean, I came to America, and then everybody's looking at me at the airport, like, why is this guy in a three piece suit in the middle of summer? <laughs> and you know, usually, you know, when you get to the airport, they have a placard that will say your name. They didn't have one. They were like, oh, yeah, that because I was the only guy. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow, I am black. That's what it is. And, th- and then this was the other part. So we were driving from Fargo to Valley City, and there was this lady driving in the car next to us with a newspaper, <laughs> reading and driving at the same time. <laughs> You're like, I got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was, my first impressions were pretty, pretty interesting. I, I, I still remember the first time I saw snow and went out, snow started coming down. I'm just like, wait a minute, this is not what I saw in Home Alone. Because you know, the kid was playing in the snow, you know, having all of that fun. No, that's not the same. It's freezing. I could not feel my fingers. So yeah, oh, very interesting, fun times. So anyway, you went to school in North Dakota. Then my undergrad in Valley City, North Dakota, and went to University of Minnesota. Did my oh, master's. to warm up, warm up, go to go to balmy Minnesota. <laughs> so yeah, did my master's at the University of Minnesota in cybersecurity, and then from there I wanted to do more leadership work. So I did a program from Yale, and then of course moved from there. Did uh, another cybersecurity program from Carnegie Mellon trying to understand more. My, wow. my whole goal is really trying to understand more about cybersecurity and how I can influence the rest of the generation that we are in and the rest that's behind me. So it's just been a lot of learning and lots of certifications. Um, I mean, you can see some of the back if you can see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So give us some of your career highlights. So I will say I've done pretty much everything from moving from the help desk, moving to a little bit of a uh, security operations. So we are the guys that would build the systems that uh, we would use to detect hacking. And then I went to be one of the guys that were actually going and then look at what the hackers are doing and try to predict and stop and all of that. And then I went more into the leadership part and then 
helping companies also stay secure. So my last company I was with was uh, Allianz. So Allianz is in 54 countries. And I was the guy who was in charge of making sure that our relationships with all of the companies within Allianz in North America on the cybersecurity front, we were secure. Yeah, interesting. So again, those are the, kind of their suppliers and their partners. Yeah. So basically, even with them, it was more with the individual companies within them. So all the things that go in between that, everything. So when and why did you start Premier Choice Consulting? So Premier Choice Consulting came in when, you know, working with all the big companies, they have money, they have uh, the resources, they have people. But then we do have someone like my uncle who has his own tracking company, but takes all these invoices, gets all of this money, all of these uh, money from, you know, the people that he does work with, but has no idea how to secure them. Until one day, he got an email, clicked on the link, and the next thing you know, the person had his bank account, his business bank account, was able to go in there and transfer all his money out. So he, he was just like... You know, I, I think it's always so crazy when, he, when something like that happens, but... I know one time somebody called me, this is 20, 20 years ago. Yep. And they said, Hey, is this Joe Lynch? I was like, yes, it is. And they said, your, your visa has been hacked. And uh, I was like, oh, and they said, I go, my debit card or my credit? They go credit. And they go, just for security purposes, could you please read us your number? And I, I reached in my pocket, grabbed my credit card and I start to read it. And then I say, wait, hold up. You should know that. Click. They hung up. Hung up. Yep. And I was thinking I was within 10, 15 seconds of giving them all the information they needed just because they sounded right on the phone. Exactly. Now, if it was, if we've all gotten those weird phone calls where you go, this I know is a scam from the time I pick it up. That was just in a way that I found myself going, I, I trusted them. And I wasn't thinking, and I was 10 seconds away from giving them my credit card information. Exactly. My mother's in a garden club and older women. And she said at one of the recent garden club meetings, a woman came in and this, my mom says, this lady's very, very sharp. And she said, she goes, I'm so embarrassed to stand in front of you today, but I wanted to speak to all of you. And she said, I got conned. I, I, I got scammed out of. And she talked about this horrible situation where she was conned out of this hundreds of thousands of dollars. And she said, she goes, I'm so embarrassed. I feel old. I feel uh, stupid. I, I I knew better. I'm, I'm not a naive person, but here I am out hundreds of thousands of dollars and nothing can be done. And she goes, I don't want anyone else to feel this way. Exactly. And if you think about it. And that's on a personal level. Yeah. And that's, but it goes, it goes deeper than that. If your company right now, so we, we can talk, and whenever you're ready to talk about this, we can di- we can dive deeper into what it means for companies to be secure. Well, yeah, and and well, let's before we get to that, let's say it's just one thing. We've heard from the White House recently that R- Russia is doing a lot of hacking, and I don't think it's just Russia. I think there's uh, lots of countries, but Russia right now is in precarious situation, and. That, so th- this might be related to the Ukraine invasion. It might be related to the sanctions. But this, even after this goes away, there's still bad actors all over the world who are trying to do this every single day. And I think, absolutely, if I could say this, the more connected we get, and that's all we talk about on my podcast is how do we get more connected? How do we get end-to-end visibility? How do we get digital? The more we do that, the more risk we have. Absolutely. So you, you actually shed more light on one of the things that I wanted to talk about. So in this cyber world, we define a threat. So whatever is a threat will be anybody who has a hostile intent, like a hostile intent, anything that they have. If they have a hostile intent, they have the capability. And then there is the opportunity. If all of those three meet, that is a threat right there. So say that again. What are those three? If, if they have a hostile intent, Yep. They have it they have the capability to do it and then there is the opportunity. If all of those three meet, we have a threat right there. Yeah. And and by the way, there's people looking for that opportunity. I mean, looking for that there's always going to be the the hostile intent people. 
Yep. And they're going to be capable of doing it if we don't do what we're supposed to do. The opportunity is just there for them. Exactly. And then if you think about a hostile intent people, most of the time, and even now what we are seeing a lot is that is their job. They go just like you are going to work as a doctor, you are going to work as a pharmacist, you're going to work as a tracker. They go to work every day to go find different ways they can get to our information and then hack. Right. Yeah. That's the idea. And by the way, I should tell everybody, you actually know all the African princes who are sending emails. So you know which (laughs) ones are legit, which ones are not. (laughs) You know, the interesting thing is the African princes don't send any emails. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. because because think about it. They are the prince. They don't have to they don't have to write anything. Right. Anyway, so we have this and by the way, you mentioned something about Russia, how the, their their capability for hacking. When we we're prepping you talk so talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so all the nation states that we've seen, like the Russia, the even the Chinese, they have groups that are paid that's what i was trying to say earlier that are paid to do that their job is to go out and find all these different paid by the government yeah to go out and find all these different flaws to go out and find all these different ways they can get into stuff so for your company you might just be a byproduct of something big that you are trying to do and because of what you said earlier our interconnectedness You might have, let's just say you might work for a bank, right? And you might work for a bank that has somebody like, like what's happening right now. You might work for a bank that might have somebody that is from Russia or Ukraine whose money is stored in that bank or is being invested with that, with your company. Now, if that person is being targeted, who do they go after? That's where the connectivity comes in. Right. Yep. So those are the parts that a lot of the time, most of us don't even pay attention to. You just like, oh, you know what? This is this whole thing is going on in Ukraine. This whole thing is going on with Russia. Well, it's too far. I'm far removed from there. No, you might have a company that has its roots back there in a way that you don't even imagine. Well, and, and I think one of the things that I think is so scary about this, as you mentioned, the interconnectedness of it is. So if I'm the larger companies, so if I'm the Kraft Heinz, if I'm Procter & Gamble, if I'm General Motors, they have cybersecurity, obviously. And then, then they have partners. You know, I'll call them their suppliers, right? And then they have tier two suppliers, you know, who spoke. So I know they're always trying to get a better handle on that. But the further you get from the big company, you get to some small company is where the opportunity potentially to, to break in is at. Absolutely. And and I've been reading all sorts of horror stories ever since we talked or discussed doing this about how people are hacking in from like thermostats. And I mean, <laughs> hackers are good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so think about it. Okay. Let's just say we have a CEO of uh, Procter & Gamble. We have a CEO of Wayfair. And as an attacker... Think about it from the attacker's perspective. If I want to get to Wayfair, I'm not going to go to the Wayfair organization. They have all the things, you know, stacked up right. It will be hard for me. But what if I can go towards or find their kids' little iPhone or their kids' iPad that they play games on that there's no security on, then get on their home network. If I get on their home network, now I have the CEO sitting at home sending emails. I can get in between that and now figure out what's the most important to them and use the CEO's access as a way to get into their network. Right. And I think what what you know, a lot of people listening to this podcast are in supporting those large companies. Yes. Third-party logistics. And we do have a lot of their data. Our, their data is in our systems. Absolutely. And, you know, if there is to ever be, you know, a cyber cyber terrorism event, the reputational risk, the financial hit, I mean, I don't think you can call back and say, hey, I know last, hey, so sorry about getting your company hacked. I hope that's not a problem. We'd still like to move your freight. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Joe, we'd think still about like it to be your technology company. They're like, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to have to rethink that a little bit because exactly. that that is one of those things where you didn't just cost them a bad shipment. You didn't just cost them reputational damage, a transaction. You could have cost them tens of millions, billions of dollars. 
Of course. Of course. I mean, think about it this way. If you get hacked, well, first things first, we, we, we are talking about the hack, right? Most of the time, the attackers have been in the environment for years. And companies have no idea about it. If you look at TJ Maxx, for instance, in their case, the attackers had been in their service for over two years. And why are they just waiting around, wait, waiting for yeah, an opportunity? Yeah, they're waiting for the perfect opportunity. There's no reason. So they, they, they had even gotten in there so deep that they had labeled all the stuff that they wanted to take out and what they thought was not important. And they were just playing around. And most of the companies that are out there right now have no idea attackers are already in the environment. Because the last part that we see on the news is the last part. That's the hack. That's when they've actually ex- executed everything. So this is how, let's just say, a ransomware. This is the one that you've been seeing a lot on the news. Ransomware basically is a company coming in, an attacker getting into your environment, and then they lock up your stuff, and then they say, pay me money, right? And if you pay me money, I release it for you. But let's think about what happens before they get to the ransom phase. They figure out a way who's important, a way to get in, the opportunity. They get into your environment. They spend time studying your environment. They look at all the security features you have over there and they bypass what they can. They grab your information and then they send your information out and make copies of them. Make copies of them and then send them out. Then they have those copies. And now they will come to you and say, Hey, Joe, or hey, whoever it is I'm talking to right now, if you don't pay me this amount of money, I don't give your data out. So you can decide, either pay or don't pay. If you pay, they know you have money. So that means they can come back to you for more. And if you don't pay, then they'll be like, well, we will leak out your secret sauce. And this gets us back to what we, we had started talking about earlier, which is the three forms of things that we look at in cybersecurity, which is your confidentiality, integrity and availability we call that the cia triad so say it one more time so we call this the cia triad confidentiality integrity and availability for every company that's out there you fall into one of those categories one or more i should say so if you are i mean look at it this way if you are amazon you pride yourselves on hey I am available 24-7. You can order anything 24-7. But what if an attacker can get into Amazon and then shut Amazon down? That's availability right there. Right. If the electric grid goes down like you were talking about earlier, that's availability right there. Lots of things go down, right? Integrity. What is it? How do we ensure if, if you get paid by a tracking, you know, a company's logistics partner, whoever it is that you are working with at the time, and then somebody's able to go in there and change their numbers. What would that look like? Let's just say you supply them two tons of material and somebody goes in there and changes it to one or says you never even did that. What happens? And then if you have your own company where you have a secret source that you have been working on that makes you unique from everyone that's out there, and someone is able to get that data and put it out there, like Coca-Cola, put your secret sauce out there. That's confidentiality. Well, it could be out there. your code too, right? It can be your code. It can be anything that makes you special. If that gets out there right now, then what do you have? Right. And by the way, you mentioned we, when we were prepping, we talked about the electric grid. Years ago, was it 10 years ago? We had in the Midwest, the grid go down the electric grid. Now, it did not impact me where I lived, yep. but I had a lot of friends who it did. So I live, little out, I live on the outskirts of Detroit. So they came, I had friends come, and I lived on the lake. It was nice, right? So <laughs> we spent a nice weekend with friends, but it told us that how, how vulnerable we are when they, that grid goes down, there's no internet, there's no no lights, no nothing. nothing. And now we're talking about electric cars. Those electric cars will be tied to electricity, obviously. The more connected we get, you know, when you think about this, is, you know, don't, don't even forget, how about the um, our folks who are in the hospital right now? Imagine you are going for surgery and something like that happens. So, yes, it might not be you, but what if you have a family member that's going through surgery? Yeah. And then that happens. Did you know, I just noticed this this week, just something very interesting that I noticed this week. So one of my friends works in the medical industry and then we were talking about security and all of these places. And he's like, well, you know, one of the things that I have to worry about every day. And I said, well, no, what? He goes, the doors, all the doors are controlled electronically. 
Right. I always remember when when first when I I worked in automotive when we first got those badges that would swipe us in and out of the building. I always remember, um, you know, we didn't people didn't particularly understand how all that was working. And I always remember they had a, some guy came in on the weekend, used his badge, walked in, hit his badge again, walked in that door, went and gathered up three computers, him and his friends, and walked back out. And it's funny because they're all on videotape. And it's just, so, as soon as somebody badges in, the cameras come on. And I, and I remember somebody said, I didn't know they could do that. Well, it was 20 some years ago. That seemed like really high tech. But now we know cameras are everywhere, right? So, yeah. so if I if I can hack a camera, if I can hack a badge, right? There are lots of cameras. There are lots of sites out there right now that will show you cameras of people's homes, cameras of places that are not even secure, that are out there online. Oh, God. Yeah, it's funny. We have Alexa and Google and all that. We're constantly listening. Yeah, it, it, and it's interesting because... I gave one to a, a, a family member and they were joking like, okay, they, they like it for weather and radio and whatever they're doing with it. They said, yeah, they're going to be really bored with my life, right? So I'm not talking about anything that's, but all it takes is it listens in on you talking to your bank and they say, what's your account number, right? That's all, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. I know a lot of people keep on saying, I've heard that several times where they're like, well, they are going to be really bored with my life. Most of the time, it's not just about you though, but it's about who you are connected to. Do you remember ever getting an email where it came from one of your friends who got hacked? Yes. Same way. Yep. So we all know, now that you've scared me, Felix, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. So, so we, I think most companies, you know, we, we, uh, Probably most companies listening. Yep. Most people listening that work at companies that potentially ha are have some risk. So, what's the first step? What would like? So, I will say at this point, anyone who is under the sound of my voice, if you have an, an organization, big, small, get a security assessment done. So, what does that security assessment look like? Give me the what is what is that? The security assessment is just like your annual physical that you do at a doctor. It, Security as just that it, this is we, we should be more reliable than that because most people are going, <laughs> Oh, I've gotten physical in years. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole idea is to give you a posture, right? Your security posture, let you know what is in your environment right now, what should you be worried about, and what you should be doing to make sure that your company is safe. The least things that you can be doing to make sure your company is safe from getting, getting attacked. And if you do get attacked, what are some of the things that you can do to make sure that it doesn't spread? Right. So this is like a current state assessment. Like, and it'll tell me, here's your vulnerabilities, here's your weaknesses, your threats, whatever you want to call them. I would say they're risks. Yes. And then, and then, and then you can figure out what the impact of those risks are. Exactly. And then you guys can say, you know, here's what, so I'm assuming after you do that, you say, you need to do this, 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 and this. Absolutely. So we would come in, help you look at your environment and tell you, all the things that we can see that you are doing right. It's not that every time you're doing something wrong. It's the things that you're doing right that you should continue doing, the things that you should be paying attention to, and all the things that you are not even aware of and what you can do to get you to an optimal state. Because at the end of the day, now this is the part that kills a lot of companies in my experience. Most of the time, it's not that they got hacked. It's that you lost someone's data. And the government now comes up to you to say, Joe, you are, you know, we're in 2022 and you are supposed to do all of these things to protect the customer's data and you did not. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to charge you 550 bucks for each and every person's data that got lost. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Where they will say they will charge you this um, X amount of dollars for each and every person's data that got lost. I think also, in addition, if it got to that point where you're being fined by the government, you also lost that customer and your reputation was shot. I mean, we're all getting very connected on social media where somebody says, hey, Felix, you going to work with those guys? You go, oh, no, those guys. Uh... And by the way, that's the kind of thing, let's just say a company gets hit like TJ Maxx you mentioned. Yep. Right after that, you know, they spent millions, maybe tens of millions of dollars upgrading everything. Exactly. But if you, 
to some people in your probably in your business say, oh, what about TJ Maxx? Go, oh, sloppy, right? They are not probably not at all sloppy right now. They're probably best in class. But it's one of those things. It's reputational. That's how reputation works, unfortunately. Exactly. And, and, and for most companies, they don't even get to come back from that. I mean, what is your annual revenue that if you were to do the math, if you lost even a thousand people's data right now and you were charged 550, how do you get back? Right. Well, and I would also say this while we're talking about it, this again, the looming supply chain threat. I think we can flip that the other way and say, my company is best in class when it comes to security. That's what one one more reason you should work with me. You know, again, when you talk about transportation, logistics, warehousing, technology, these companies are all have access to an enormous amount of your information. Absolutely. And not all, usually they're smaller than the companies they serve. And so you look and say, not only do we have risk of our companies, but we have risk of our, our, our customers' data. And we've built, by the way, we've, in this business, we went from very little technology 10, 15 years ago to very tech, very high tech stuff today. And, you know, this might be uh, anecdotal. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. We started off with maybe a, a weak foundation for it, just built and built and built. And I still think there's probably old systems out there with old protocols and old, uh, old weaknesses that we don't want to have in there. Yep. So, you know, when you're running fast with technology, things get, doors get left open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, and just like what you were saying, most companies are working super hard to move into the cloud. They are trying to get products out super quickly. They are trying to pretty much get things out ASAP because, I mean, that's the world we are in. If you don't get it out quickly, another company does it and then you lose your market share, right? And now you have to go compete with them. So because of that, they are building products that are not secure. They are building software and putting in apps out there that are not secure that makes it easy for attackers to just hijack and then use that to get your information. By the way, a few years ago, probably five years ago, whatever it was, there was a change at Google if you use Google Chrome and you see, go to a website and it say not secure, right? Yep. And so Google will even tell you, don't go to those websites. I'm always surprised how many companies still don't have secure websites. Yeah, because Joe, it's expensive. And most of the time they don't even know about it. By the way, that's not even expensive to get that upgraded. I mean, that's... but who's going to do it for you? If you look at a mom and pop shop, they don't have the person. Right. So, when we were prepping, you said, look, the first step, like right now today, what you can do before I call Felix and say, get in here and do me, give me that threat assessment. You said, you can do this as individuals. Give us that list. Definitely make sure that your passwords are updated and don't be using weak passwords. I mean, we still get in passwords that are like winter 2022 or their dog's first name. And then, you know, uh, the year that we are in, those passwords are easily guessable. Like it will take 30 seconds for an attacker to just break that. So definitely get your passwords updated. Make them complex. Well, what if I use one of those services that, that has all my passwords? So like when Google says, or one of those other services that, hey, we'll, we'll save your passwords. Are the, is that a good idea? You can. I mean, I, I understand that because we are in a we are in a world where I have eight hundred and fifty passwords. Exactly. So you have eight hundred and fifty <laughs> passwords. You cannot remember all of them. If you use a password manager, that's great. Just make sure that brings us to the next part of this, right? Make sure that you have multi factor authentication on that. Yeah. So that that's that thing where it says uh, it was I'm logging in. It says we're going to send you a text. So it sends me a text. So they will get... send you a text, it, it, some, it can even call you, it will have you put in a secret code, whatever it is that you are the only one who knows that. So the whole point about security, and I have to state this before we get ended here because I know we are running out of time. But one thing that I will say is what we are doing now, security number one is supposed to enable you for everything that you are doing. Your business gets easier, right? And you can move faster. Now, it's not here to stop you. The other thing with security is, Nobody can really say, I can stop the attacker from coming into my environment. No, if they tell you that they are lying, what you can do is you can slow them down. And that's where layered security comes in. So you throw different things on a layer. Like if you go to your house right now, you will have a front door. 
that has a lock, you have the people, you can see someone coming in. And even if they get in through your front door, there might be, you know, a camera, whatever it is that you have. All of those are layers, right? And then they get into your house. They don't necessarily get into your bedroom. They get into maybe the living room first. And then there's another. Door. So all of those things are some of the things that we're talking about here that as you can do as an individual and as a company, be it small or big. And then the last part will be make sure you are updating your systems, please. I cannot stress that enough. Like an example, just Friday night, Google Chrome had a flaw that came out that an attacker can use and then get access to your stuff. Go ahead and update that ASAP. Now, doesn't our if I have Google Chrome, doesn't that update automatically? No, it doesn't. It gives you the update and it shows it in red. You can go ahead and hit it and say update. Make sure you're on the latest version. If you're on iOS, like on uh, Apple, there's a new iOS at 15.4. Make sure you upgrade it and upgrade to the latest because it has all these security patches that you need to do. Right. I asked you whether I should get Norton or McAfee or one of those antiviruses on my computer. Yeah. I wouldn't specifically call any company and say, you know, go with Norton, McAfee, any one of them. Just any form of antivirus you have is good because guess what? You can have Norton and if you don't update it, it's just as good as not having anything. Yep. So individuals, like right now today, what we can all do, yep. we can change our passwords to make them stronger. But anyway, we need to wrap this bad boy up. So the risk is higher than ever. And yes. you said, you said this is potentially, and of course, this is your business, but you say this is an enormous threat. And it, and they, they, they have uh, the government, the government's come out and told us we need to worry about that. And you said there's a capability maturity level. So you talked about this. What is that briefly? So basically what we will do is when we come in, we look at your current state. So when we do the security assessment, we can give you a state of where you are at. So we have a model that we use, your capability maturity model, where we can tell you you are, it goes from level one to level five, where we can tell you you are at a level one. And these are all the things that you need to do to get to level five. And also being at level one, these are all the things that can happen to you. So, and we, we, I mean, of course we walk you through it. We walk hand in hand with you through it and make sure that you get to a state where you know that you have done the least things that you can do to stay protected. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that everyone is going to get hacked. It's just like COVID and how COVID happens, not to drive us into injury. At one point in time, you are going to have people around you that had that or people around you that got hacked, but you will know that you are protected. Right. And even if the attackers get into your environment, they cannot steal your data. And even if they do, they can't do anything with it. Yep. So I think we we all know there's this huge threat. And I think, honestly, I do think as soon as there is, and we know there's going to be an event where somebody's going to get hacked yep. and it's going to be, it's going to be a wake up call yeah. to, to uh, I think everybody gets a little more worried and says, Hey, how are we doing? Yep. I think you want to be able to say to your potential customers, we are ahead of the game. You know, I don't know what our competitors are doing, but we are uh, on that capability maturity level. We're number five. We spent the time and effort. We do the right things. Absolutely. And so when you work with us, you're not going to be hacked. If you get hacked, it won't be on us. That's right. So I'm going to, I'm going to summarize this morning, get your final thoughts on it. And so you talked a little bit about, again, getting this assessment. If your company get this assessment, which is current state, Tell me where I'm weak. Tell me where there's risks, vulnerabilities, et cetera. And then what the impact of those are. And that's that capability maturity level. And um, you also said that start today. There's nothing else. Start today with stronger passwords for everybody who's using passwords. Get the software updates, you know, with Google or iOS. Use two-factor or multi-factor. Exactly. Authentication. What do they call that? Yeah. Multi-factor authentication. You're right. Absolutely right. And then you know, potentially get Norton or McAfee on your system. Don't click on links you don't know. <laughs> I know. Please don't click on links you don't know. Make don't sure go, before, don't go places you're not supposed to go. <laughs> exactly. Make sure before you click on a link, you know, actually the, the browser does a great job or even in your email, it does a great job. You can just hover your mouse over the link and it will tell you where the link is supposed to go. And if it's not one that you know, don't click on it. Yep. Just delete it. So, Final thoughts on all this, Felix. My final thoughts, exactly what I started with. Cybersecurity is everyone's problem. Don't think of cybersecurity being only for the big boys. It can happen to you. And it's not just for the techies. No, it's not. 
It's not. It can and, and it can rear itself in so many different ways that can cause harm to people. And you don't want to be caught in that crossfire. So just like we've we've talked about today, just do the basics. If you do the basics, you will be fine. Really get a security assessment done. Get to know what it is that you are dealing with. Understand the most important parts of your business and the, the, where your crown jewels are. You know, get go go to Best Buy, go to any of these uh, shops, buy a backup system. I mean, we can help you with that as well. But get a backup file and back up your systems, your files, your pictures. Put one somewhere that is not attached to the internet in any way. And I can't stress this enough. Use strong passwords. Definitely do multi-factor authentication because if I'm an attacker back in those days where, you know, we would go out and try to attack and try to see what the attackers would do because you got to think like them to be able to protect. You see someone who has that, you're like, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time on that. I'll go for the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so Felix, let's wrap this bad boy up. Tell me a little bit about your company, Premier Choice Consulting. Who do you guys work with? Who's your sweet spot? And what do you do for them? So we help small to medium uh, businesses want to understand what their cybersecurity posture is. They come in, they say, hey, we, we need small tasks done. We can definitely help you with that. We need some analytics done. We can help you with that. We also don't know what our cybersecurity is. We want to know what we can do to make sure that we check these boxes to say, yep, we are definitely secure. We can definitely help you with that. Th- there are other parts of uh, mentoring for folks who are in cybersecurity now or people who want to have more training and awareness for their cybersecurity folks. We do that as well, where we will come in, talk to your employees and show them some of the things that we're talking about. We actually dig deeper and then show you, hey, these are some of the things that can happen where if you click on this link, this is exactly what happens. And what goes through. we go through all of those scenarios with you so you can walk away knowing that you have done all it takes to be secure. And that's what we stand for. Yeah. If this is just one more, one more place where we can say, you know, you spend a little bit on, on being proactive or spend a lot later on, on being reactive. <laughs> so nobody has budget for this kind of thing, but let's face it. If you don't have the budget for it, you don't have the budget to uh, deal with it later either. Yep. So, so, so spend now or spend a lot more later. <laughs> Absolutely. Felix, what I'm going to do is I'll put a link to your company website in the show notes. I'll also put a link to your LinkedIn profile and any other links you give me, I'll put in the show notes so people can follow up and talk to you and your company. Sure. One thing I'll say is please just make sure that you walk away knowing that cybersecurity is everyone's problem and you can do the least you you can on your part to make sure that you are secure. It's been a pleasure and I look forward to uh, connecting with everybody on here. Thank you, Joe. It's an amazing talking to you. Thank you so much, Felix. I really appreciate you taking the time. And thank all of you for listening to my podcast. Your support's very much appreciated. Until next time, onward and upward. You've been listening to the Logistics of Logistics podcast, where we engage in conversation with experts in the logistics field. For more details, visit thelogisticsoflogistics.com or follow Joe Lynch on LinkedIn.